Knock at your door and I'm serving like pizza I got the ice, Italian pizza Bitch, I'm a family man like I'm pee. These niggas be short stops, they're a GT Knock a nigga out like I'm Vegeta Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy Rod I'm back with another YouTube video for the day, man And listen, 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 man I got uh, uh, a video by the Gentleman's Game Called 5 Things You Need to Know in Your 20s And shoot, man I'm finna be 20 pretty soon yeah, pretty soon, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, well, I'm on the verge of my 20s, I should say that. So, with that being said, man, hey, let's see what I need to know before I, when I get in my 20s, you know what I'm saying? This looks very, this is very informative, you know what I'm saying? So, let's see what it's talking about, you know what I'm saying? Like, comment, subscribe, let me know what I should react to next, man. Follow you on social media, it's my IG Snapchat in the intro and outro, and my IG down below, as long as it's original video. So, go show the gentleman's game some love. But show me, but I need more, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, let's get into this video. Shall we? Put in the basket. Shall we? Put in the basket. There we go. Gentlemen's game here. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. It was actually my birthday a few weeks ago, and the week leading up to my birthday, I took time to reflect on how I've navigated my 20s so far. Things I wish I could have done differently, things I wish I didn't waste so much time on, etc. So I felt inspired to share five of the most important lessons I've learned so far in my 20s. These are things I wish someone had told me when I was 19 or 20, about to enter real adulthood. So hopefully for the younger viewers or viewers in your early 20s, you can pick up something useful from this video to apply to your own life. Mm -hmm. uh, before we start though, make sure to check out my free 5 page PDF on the fundamentals of attraction in the description box below if you haven't done so yet. That's just attendance. Right, let's begin. Yeah, you said attraction. Number one, an abundance of time and options. When you're in your 20s, you will never have more free time in your life than you do right now. Chances are you most likely don't have a kid yet or a mortgage to pay off. You might have a job that you need to devote 8 hours to every day, but once you're off the clock, you probably have lots of free time. Or at least lots of free time relative to how little time you'll have in your 30s and 40s. I want you to think of time as a river. You know, sounds like a cheesy Eastern proverb, but it's a good analogy. When you're born, you start out by the shore, ready to sail into the waters. And as you go through school and learn how to make friends and be social, you're starting to venture out into the waters a bit more as the flow of the river pushes you further and further away from the shore. And eventually, when you're in your 20s, you're at a very unique spot in the river. You know, it's too far from the shore that you can't swim back, and the river's current is only pushing you further and further away, but you're still very, very far away from the end of the river. Mm -hmm. So you have the decision of how you're going to sail your boat, right? Like which direction you want to swim towards for the remainder of your life. Thing is, when you're in your 20s, you have so much time. Again, you will probably never have as much time and energy as you do now. So take advantage of it. How do you want to set yourself up for the rest of your life? Right. What skills do you want to learn? You know, what kind of a dating life do you want? Mm -hmm. What countries do you want to visit before you die? All of these are questions you need to reflect on and then direct your time and energy into solving. When you're this young, the options are truly endless. Right? It's like that quote, you can do anything but not everything. Right. So take advantage of your abundance of time and gain experiences. If there's a time in your life to be selfish, it's now in your 20s. <laughs> selfish. Number two, take more risks and L's. If there's one thing I'm really grateful I did in my early 20s, it was that I took lots and lots of L's or losses. I lost tens of thousands of dollars trying to build my first two businesses. I worked at miserable, soul-crushing jobs for years after what? school before finding oh, heck my no. path. I would go to clubs with my buddies, and sometimes I'd not only get rejected by girls, but I'd get completely embarrassed. Like, I remember one time this girl literally gave me a look like, you're, you're kidding, right? Before she sipped her drink and just walked away. Those rejections, those L's, hurt so much at the time. I'd feel defeated, frustrated. Like, was it even worth going out to improve my game if it was going to suck this much? Was it worth taking yes. these painful rejections and having my self-esteem obliterated? Yes. The next morning, I'd wake up, look at myself in the mirror, and ask these tough questions. But almost always, my answer was, yes. 
Yes, it was worth taking all these risks, all these L's, because it made me tougher. It made me more resilient to adversity. And looking back, that was probably the single greatest decision I made. Because through those early experiences of taking lots of risks, lots of losses, you learn to stop fearing failure. And once you stop being scared to fail, you gain a certain sense of freedom. The freedom exactly. of actually learning for learning's sake, not just trying to avoid failure. There's a Yeah, man, exactly. You can't Well, that's what stops a lot of people from achieving their goals, from wanting to work towards their goals and achieving their goals in life. Because people are afraid of failure. You can't be afraid of failing. You know what I'm saying? You you, you can't be afraid of failing in life at all. If the, if your dream is to be an actor or a movie star or something, take it, it. It's a it's a big chance. You might not. It's a big chance. You might not make it. it, it let's be honest here. But you gotta take that leap of faith if you want it that bad. You gotta take that leap of faith and chase your dream. And if you fail, you fail. But you know what? You tried it. Cause you never know. You might actually make the role. You might actually get into a movie with Denzel or uh, Idris Elba or something like that. You never know. You know what I'm saying? So take the risk. Take the risk with whatever you're doing. You want to launch a business and, and invest thousands of dollars into it? Hey, do it. You don't know if that business is going to blow up or not. But if you don't, oh well. You know what I'm saying? You you, you tried your best. That's all you, all you can do in life is try your best at everything. At everything you do. Everything you want to do. No matter if you fail or not. If you fail, so what? You know what I'm saying? At least you try. And that's good, and that's good enough. Well... For some people, it's not good enough, but hey, that makes you more hungry to do it again or or do something else and try even harder or something else. Like, hey, man, you got to take risks. You can't be afraid of failing, man. You got to do what you want to do in life. You can't be afraid to fail because you got to chase your dreams. Let's get back to the video. Message. Great book. I actually read about this failing forward by John C. Maxwell. Basically, in the book, he talks about how when you take risks and fail, you have one of two choices. You can either take the failure personally, like you're inherently just not good enough, making you discouraged from trying again in the future, or you can choose the second option, which is to choose to interpret your failure as an opportunity for growth. Exactly, to get better. Seeing where to work on, etc. Going back Message. to the same example as before, when I get a rejection from a girl these days, which will still happen by the way no matter how good you become, right. I brush it off easily. I learn to even find the humor in it, like, damn, that girl just shut me down. <laughs> you know, it's alright, her boyfriend wouldn't have liked it anyways if I made out with her. And then Mike. I just move on to the next one, the next shot, the next project, or the next whatever that you're scared to fail at. So don't be scared to take more risks. Do things that take you out of your comfort zone. Things where you'll likely fail at times, but it's still so worth it in the end exactly. once you evolve into a better you. Exactly. Number three, not everyone is going to like exactly. you. Exactly, it's always going to be haters. From childhood through your teenage years, you're taught how to get along with people. You know, you work on group projects, form study groups, join extracurricular organizations, Maybe learn how to work your first job and be an obedient employee. During right. these formative years, you're encouraged hey, to you avoid confrontation. When a bully tries to bother you in school, you probably call on the teacher to take care of it instead of handling it yourself, for example. But once you become a grown adult, you quickly realize that you're going to have to learn how to deal with difficult people. Exactly. Because not everyone is going to be reasonable. Not everyone is going to like you. And if you maintain that childlike desire to please everyone and avoid confrontation, you will be taken advantage of in some way. Right. It's inevitable because there are some real jerks out there. And that's completely fine because you're not going to like everyone back. What you need to learn to do in these scenarios, whether at work or at a social event, when you bump into some unsavory people who don't like you, is to stop caring what they think about you. Right? There's another book I read about this called The Four Agreements. Right? One of the principles the author teaches is to stop taking things personally. Basically, when someone acts like a dick to you, it has more to do with their own issues rather than something wrong with you. Right? Some people are just unpleasant, so stop caring what they think about you and stop trying to please everyone. Right. It's corny to say, but be yourself. Be comfortable with who you are. Whoever likes you will like you for you, and those that don't like you won't. Exactly. That is life. 
Number whoever four, whoever likes you will like you. As possible. When you're in your 20s, be yourself, people there's flock never again you. going to be a time in your life where you'll have as much energy, time, and motivation to yes, go sir. out and meet people. Yes, sir. The sad reality is the older you get, the less you're going to go out. It'll be right. harder and harder for you and your friends to get together as they get married, have kids, and buy a house. Your 20s are the time in your life where you can go out the most. Not that you can't go out in your 30s and beyond. Anyone who wants to improve in this aspect of their life still can. You know, but generally, it just isn't the same when you're older. So enjoy it while it lasts. Also, another reason I suggest to go out as much as possible in your 20s is because it's the best time to actually learn how to be comfortable and natural in these types of environments. A lot of my viewers tell me that they have some form of social anxiety. Well, the best way to overcome social anxiety is simply through exposing yourself to those sorts of social situations and to slowly desensitize yourself to the anxiety or those feelings of awkwardness. So if you do have social anxiety, you're going to benefit so much more from learning to overcome that in your 20s so that you'll have the rest of your life to reap the benefits of learning those social skills. Exactly. On the other hand, if you have social anxiety and you put off trying to overcome it until your 30s, it's only going to be harder and harder to do so as you get older and your brain gets more set in its ways. And when you do finally overcome social anxiety in your 30s, you'll have less time to actually reap the benefits. So don't put this off. Go out as much as possible in your 20s. Take social risks and learn to strike a conversation with a stranger. I'm not saying you have to go out every night, but once or twice a week is good. You'll be thanking yourself that you did, and you'll look back fondly on those years with nostalgia when you're older. Number 5. Move out. Look, I get that millennials live with their parents on average way more compared to older generations. Mm -hmm. And you can blame this on a bunch of different reasons. Buying a house is more expensive than right. ever. The increase in salaries hasn't kept up with inflation. Right. The student loan debt trap can feel yes. like a shackle around your ankle and so on and so forth. But with that being said, I still can't emphasize enough how important it is to experience living on your own at some point in your 20s. This is the age when you're supposed to learn how to be truly independent, to be self-sufficient. Truth is, women just aren't attracted to a 35-year-old man still living in his mother's basement. Exactly, and it's you right should- for a while, but at some point, you need to be your own man. I mean, think about it. Let's say you end up having the most amazing night out, meeting a beautiful girl who's super into you, down to come over and have fun. And then you, you take, take her back to your parents' house. Not exactly a turn-on for her. In my- exactly look man you shouldn't be 35 living in your parents house anyway like the come on now come come on come come on hey, come on bro you you should you shouldn't be living in your parents house when you were 30. I, i'll give it i'll give it to like hey you should be on your own and like freaking uh dang 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 i'm not i can't even give an age 20 something yeah tw after 25 i'll say after 25 y'all let me know if that's too high of an age but after 25, you should be on your own, man. At least have an apartment or something. Like, gee, like, God dang, man. Like, that that shouldn't happen at all. But shoot, man, let's get back to the video, man. Personal opinion, I think it's fine to stay at home until 25 or 26. I actually didn't move out until I was 24. But forcing yourself to find a way to survive on your own will be a powerful growth experience. It'll be stressful at times. There might be moments when you're questioning yourself if you made the right choice. If you should stick with it and learn to deal with the responsibility of living on your own. Or move back in with your parents so that you can save some money and let them take care of you. But I promise that the lessons and life experiences you'll gain from moving out and being your own man or woman will transform you into a tougher, more resilient, more resourceful, and overall more mature and capable adult. If you put yourself in a situation where you don't get a chance to learn these skills until your 30s, the reality is by then you'll be behind the curve compared to your peers. So to summarize today, we talked about five things you need to know in your 20s, which are Number one, taking advantage of how much time and options you have. Number two, taking more risks and L's. Number three, not everyone is going to like you. 
Number four, go out as much as possible. And number five, move out and be independent. Right. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. Next week, we'll be talking about types of women you should avoid. So make sure to subscribe and hit that this... notification bell so you don't miss out. And as always, peace. Hey, I might, I might watch these on my own time. I might watch some of him, his videos on my own time. Let me know if you, if you would like to see these type, see more videos from him on the channel. Or I should, or I, or I should just keep them on my own time, you know what I'm saying? But hey, man, it's very informative. And I'm happy I learned, I'm happy I knew it. But I'm happy I watched it. But at the same time, I already knew this already, you know what I'm saying? I'm already sharp to the game. I'm already sharp. I'm already sharp. You know what I'm saying? Of course, some stuff I that I learned. You know what I'm saying in this video, but most of it, overall, generally, I already knew. But it's good. It's good to keep. It's good to keep sharp on this stuff, man, because it's very important. You know what I'm saying? But hey, this was this was this was this is informative message. I'm gonna insert the clip now. But hey, man, like, comment, subscribe. Ding. If you're not hit that bell for notifications, man. If you're not subscribed, to what you doing? If you're not liking it, what you doing? If you're not commenting, what you doing? You know what I'm saying? You're wasting your time. You're wasting mine. You know what I'm saying? You're not only playing yourself, but you're playing me. So don't just help yourself. Help me, cause we are a family. Don't want to play ahead of game. Bars. Shout out to Tyrone Magnus. Ha 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 ha. No. He he he. That's how you do it. Not ha ha ha. What the fuck? Hey, look, man. But yeah, man. IG Snapchat in the IG. IG and Snapchat in the uh. Into an outro and my IG down below, along with this original video. So go show the gentleman's game some love, but I needed some more, you know what I'm saying? And I am.